25th anniversary. Foley rolls it toward the hole. Desensei cuts it off, goes to second. Marino's out, going down. And so the Pirates are turned away in the middle of the seventh inning. Pittsburgh leads Baltimore two to one. There's the line score in the ball game. And we'll go to the Baltimore seventh inning of play in the final game of the 1979 World Series. Gary Rinicky will come to the plate to face Grant Jackson. Right-handed hitter replacing John Lowenstein in the batting order. Desensei on deck, and then you'll have Rick Kinsey. Renicki will go play left field almost surely. That's his favorite position. Well, you got to be careful with this guy. He's got power. He had 25 home runs on a year. Jackson is high and away in his first pitch to Renicki for ball one. Baltimore has stranded three base runners so far in the ball game. That pitch is on the inside corner. Oh, that was a beauty. That tied him up. A lot of action in the Pittsburgh bullpen. Steady action. Look at this again. Right there. Strike two. Renicky, a little unusual hitting stance. He probably carries his hands lower than anybody in the American League in his stance when he gets into his position. Rooker has joined Blylevin now in the Baltimore bullpen. Rooker, the left-hander. And Renicky is gone. Jackson Just like made that. it look easy. And look at the bullpen. Look, Blylevin and Rooker. Blylevin, the right-hander. Rooker, the left-hander. They teamed up for the last win, a must-win, over in Pittsburgh on Sunday. That got him back here to Baltimore. Well, you had Chuck Tanner going with a left-right combination in the last two games. You're being Candelaria and Tacovic. Tonight he went with a right-hand lead, and it looked shaky for a while, but now he's back on top at 2-1 to one with the old pro Grant Jackson out there. One out and Desensei at the plate. And it's just low. Oh, that's a great asset, Keith, for a manager that and he's got quality guys in the bullpen that go from either side. Desensei hits it to center field, not too deep. Moreno comes gliding in and makes the catch. Look how far Garner was out there. <laughs> yeah, well, he gives up on nothing. Got to think about Garner when you talk about MVP. Right now, there's a fellow named Stodge. If it turns around, who knows about Scotty McGregor? Rick Dempsey. There he is. Here's a guy that's got to get a vote of two, too. Maybe more than that. The presence. You see Starger looking in at Nicosia. Had his hands out to the side. Said, yeah, I'll be alive if he bucks. They move him over to the line to guard the line. You've got the third baseman, Madlock, guarding the line. And also Starger, he's just a big step off the line at first. Hits it in the air to left field. Bill Robinson coming in, makes the catch. And so Grant Jackson's impressive as he cuts him down in order. Two to one Pittsburgh, back with more baseball after this word from our local station. Gary Renicki has gone to play left field. He plays the position well. He's there defensively for Baltimore. And for Pittsburgh, the batting order represents pretty much the ultimate threat for left-hander Scott McGregor here as Parker comes up to lead off, then Bill Robinson, and then Willie Stargell, and then if a fourth man gets a call, it'll be Bill Madlock. Well, you have to feel for Scott. He's thrown such a beautiful game. That one pitch to Stargell where Willie could golf it out of the ballpark, and it came with Bill Robinson on first. He's handled Parker tonight. They appeal. They call strike. Third base umpire Terry Tatum of the National League says he committed himself far enough. Down to the last two innings. Still so much to go. Only a one run differential. But you begin to look at baseball history. Oh. Big David unloaded on that one and missed it for strike two. He had him tied up. An excellent pitch. And that's where you've got to try and keep the ball with a fastball on Parker. You got to try and keep it in. We've said that many times before. Oh, he's a beautiful young pitcher. That's fouled away. The Bucks have won four world championships. Each one has come in a seven-game series. Donald, 
They beat the Tigers in 1909. They beat the Senators in 25. In 1960, they beat the Yankees. And in 71, they beat the Birds. The two-strike pitch is up around the chin. It's one ball and two strikes. And there's the Pirate World Series history. They lost in 1903 to the Boston Pilgrims. And they were buried by what may have been the greatest Yankee team in history. That's when John Mill just made the wild throw to close things out. The wild pitch. That's Luke down the left side, curving, and it's foul ball. Tim started as the big guy there, right-hander, and the left-hander is Tippy Martinez for Baltimore. I was just going to say, when I looked at that graphic a little while ago, how in the world could they possibly have been beaten four in a row by the 27 Yankees? <laughs> <laughs> Again, any home field advantage in the seventh game of a World Series. Visiting teams have won 12 of the last 15 seventh games. 1-2 to Parker's inside. Count evens at 2. Well, Pittsburgh has been on that line, Howard. They have been an excellent road club this year. They were 59-31 and 31 on the regular season. That's good. Parker fouls another one away. Rooker continues to throw out of the Pittsburgh bullpen and now to Colby's up and starting to work and that's what we'll have for you Saturday. So turn us on and sit down and enjoy the Trojans and the Irish the horns and the hogs and other regional games. That's fouled away. Now this will be McGregor's all probability his last inning the way it stands right now because he is a second scheduled hitter in the eighth inning for Baltimore. The Bucks have six hits off Scott. Whoa. David was really leaning on that one. It just low. Me too. He hoped ball and he got it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. McGregor's whole job. Keep them, look at that. Against left handers. See how effective they've been? Percentages don't work against these guys. That's it. Parker's gone. Donnie McGregor continues to do his job. Well, he comes back with a fastball. Parker trying to hold up, but he just couldn't. He went around, and Jerry Newdecker right there to make the call. Second strike out for Scott. And here's Bill Robinson, who was on base after a single when Willie unloaded at 378 to right field. There he is. The big man. The senior citizen as he calls himself. Good pitch. Robinson missing one and one. Once he made a hundred. Oh there's the Sly Fox. Don't ever count him out. Except he's not on the playing roster. No but he has a way of intruding upon it. <laughs> most efficiently. Once Willie Stodgill, as you look at Errol Weaver and Frank Robbins. Go back to the point made at the beginning of the telecast tonight. Middle of the Baltimore order has not been productive in the last four games. That's coming on back out of play. Certainly hasn't, Keith. But it's not over. No, sir. That's hit down the line and left. Renicki is there. And Gary makes the catch. Two out. Oh, when you say it's not over, of course, that is so true. And as we've seen already, just two swings of the bat. And that's changed this whole game around. Dower's home run and Stargell's home run. And the big man. Willie Stargell, first year at Santa Rosa Junior College. He was playing football, offensive and defensive end. Suffered a broken pelvis. Pretty well took care of his football play, and there's a shot down the right side. It is hooking foul. Oh, that bat remains so quick for a man 38 years of age. Whoop. That's interesting, isn't it? Scored the winning run. Game seven of the 71 World Series. The series. Two strikes on him. Series that was owned by the late Roberto Clemente. Interesting thing here about again the character of McGregor showing through. 
Stargell jerked it deep to right foul. Scott comes right back with a perfect pitch, and he's got him in the hole at two strikes. Get out to the left side. Renicky on his horse. Going, going, going. He won't get it. It off the wall. And Willis Stargell pounding in to second base with a double. Stargell tonight. A single. A double. A home run. A double. How about that? How did that old song used to go? Look at it again. Everyone knows him as old folks. Now Stargell strong enough to hit the ball out in left field too as he short hops it off the fence. Like the seasons, he'll come and he'll go. Boy, he's having quite a closing night, isn't he? Oh, 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 oh. He is now 12 out of 29. For the you said in the Madlock, he said, oh, what do you reckon that big old dude had for lunch? <laughs> <laughs> we can't get him out. <laughs> Billy Madlock has been handled tonight in the ball game. 0 for 3 with two out. We're in the top of the eighth inning. And they're going to load it up to first base, sending Mr. Madlock over there with a free ticket, and that will bring up Steve Nicosia, the catcher. You know, kind of one of the ironic things about that ball hit by Stargell, that was the 96th Scott McGregor pitch. Hmm. And that's all he took in his game in Pittsburgh to defeat him. So we've got the first base back occupied now. Men on first and second, Nicosia up. Earl Stang with the young southpaw, and he deserves it. Garner moves to the on back circle. Two on and two out. His job still to keep it a one run ball game. Well, one blow. There's Chuck Turner. He wanted that baseball. And one blow could tie it up. So here's Nicosia now. With Stargell at second, Madlock at first. Seven hits now for Pittsburgh. Two seven and zero. Oh, one four and two for Baltimore. Hit toward the hole. Garcia's over. Goes to get the force play on Madlock at second base, and the inning is over. So the Pirates strand a couple, and in the middle of the eighth inning. President Jimmy Carter with Commissioner Kuhn.